Hello and welcome to a very exciting announcement. I have finally finished my Excel VBA course that's going to take you from beginner to expert level. And it even has a release date. It's going to be released on January 11th. And in this video, I want to give you an overview of what you can expect and how it's set up. But first off, I want to thank you for waiting so patiently. And so I'm going to be offering a 33% discount that's available for the first two weeks that the course goes on sale. And to ensure that you get that discount, you need to go to the link in the description of this video and submit your email there. And if you have any questions, I want you to leave those in the comments for this video. Or if you don't have a YouTube account, you can click a link to a blog post that I made for this video. The link to it's also in the description of this video. And in that blog post, you can leave comments and you don't have to sign up for any accounts at all. And that way you can ask any questions that you have and get all of the information that you need before the course goes on sale. And in this video, I'm going to run through the course structure, so how the course is set up, and then tell you a bit about what you're going to learn, and more importantly, how you're going to learn it. Then I'm going to cover some of the files to show you how things are going to be set up and how they're going to work, including some of the interesting projects that we're going to be working on, and talk to you about the reference files, a very important feature of this course, as every tutorial is going to have a downloadable file. There's over 200 of them. That way you can open the file, you can read through everything we did in the tutorial, you can copy code and paste it into your own project, you will always have some code to get your project jump started, and you're always going to have something that's going to explain exactly how everything works line by line, just in case you forget it in the future. So you're going to have the video tutorials as well as the downloadable files. Now, let me talk more about the course structure. So how is the course going to be set up? We've got a lot of tutorials, but everything is organized into four neat sections. We have core sections. That's going to be the essential programming related topics. It's the foundation upon which everything else is built. It's things like variables and loops and adding logic and if statements. It's a lot of the foundational topics. And to make sure that you understand how those topics can be applied to the real world and something you are actually going to be doing, each one of those sections has an assignment attached to it. And those assignments are going to take those core concepts and apply them immediately to something that's relevant. And we're going to use those core section skills through the assignments to build a billing and invoice system. And that's going to form one of the main projects of the course. So after every core section, you have an assignment. The assignment's going to apply the core section principles to something useful. And even after the very first course section, that assignment is going to show you how to make something that you can use immediately in your workflow and save yourself a ton of time. This way, you won't waste time learning complex programming concepts without understanding how they can actually help you directly and immediately in your workflow. In addition to those two sections, we have practical sections. And those ones are going to show you how to do more specific but very useful things in VBA. And they're going to build on the skills you learn in the core sections to do things like searching through a workbook, validating user input, using worksheet functions, selecting files, working with tables, shapes, and everything to do with pivot tables and sorting and filtering, importing, exporting, emailing, and pretty much everything under the sun. The practical sections are really going to be where the rubber meets the road as far as getting your programming to do really interesting specific things with Excel. And the files in these sections are specifically made so that you can copy the code from them and paste them directly into your projects so that you don't have to start anything from scratch. You want to select multiple files, open up that file in the practical section, copy the code, paste it into your project, and you've got it there, along with all the explanation you need to understand everything you need to do to make the changes. And I'm going to show you some of those sections and files in just a moment. They are really interesting. And the final section in the course are the projects. Now the projects tie together everything. They tie together the core sections, the assignments, and the practical sections. And they take you through the entire process of making a completely custom VBA project from scratch and taking it from your manager saying, I want you to build something that does X, Y, and Z to you handing them a completed project. 
I take you from getting business requirements to translating that into programming requirements, to translating that into the visual interface that you need to build in order to satisfy those requirements, to planning how you're going to actually code it, to then coding it from scratch. So I take you through the entire process from start to finish so that you will feel comfortable, well, getting a couple sentences from a boss and then translating that into a completed project. And not just a project that's finished, but a project that is easy to update and maintain in the future, which is a very important theme I take you through in this course many, many times. Because code that can't be updated easily in the future is really, really bad code. So we focus a lot on that. And the three projects that we have are the task manager project, the data analysis project, that is a big boy that's going to combine everything in the entire course. Once you complete this guy, you are going to feel like you can take anything on because, well, you pretty much will be able to. And then we have a completion of all the assignments that's going to create the billing and invoice system. This is the third project, and it's interwoven throughout the course, as I've already explained, through the 14 assignments that we have up here. That's how we build that one. The other two, the task manager and the data analysis, are their own separate sections where we focus a lot more on planning and structuring everything. Whereas this guy, we just build in a more iterative manner. Still paying attention to all of our business requirements, we just build it in a slightly different way. So you are going to get a lot of experience making real world applications and projects in this course. Now, let me show you some of the files that we're gonna work with, and then we will go to the reference files. As I already mentioned, there's over 200 of them. They're going to make your life so easy, and they're really like the second important chunk of this course. So back here we have the final project, which is going to allow you to do so many amazing things. But we're not going to start here because this course is not meant to overwhelm you. I'm going to ease you into everything. So let me show you one of the files that we're going to be working with at the very beginning. And this is one where I teach you how to work with ranges and ranges that are going to overlap and then how to figure out which ranges overlap. So at the beginning of the course, the tutorials are going to be smaller. There's going to be a lot less code in them, and they're going to be much easier to digest. That way, you're not going to get overwhelmed. And then the assignments are what's going to transform a topic like this, where we're just figuring out what range touches another range, and we're going to take those skills and turn them into something useful instead of just an abstract concept. And let's take a look at the assignment. This right here is a part of the assignment that we're going to be making where we can store bills on a specific worksheet and have them here until we need to send them out in an invoice. So then we can just double click this cell over here and it's going to send the bill from this line to the invoice on the other worksheet that we can then export in a separate workbook and email and do whatever we want to do with it. And this is where we're going to be working piece by piece, adding new features or code improvements throughout the entire course. And you can see we have a few different worksheets down here. This is a very interesting assignment, and I think it's going to really help you understand how much you can do after every core section in the course. Because sometimes it can be hard to take those concepts and apply them to the real world unless you have an assignment like this. Now let's move on and take a look at the first big self-contained project, the task manager. Uh, that is the task manager a beautiful visual way to manage your tasks. So let's add another task here, new task. Uh, let's call this guy beige order, priority high, due date, let's make it 5-5-2022, and status, we'll go with in progress. How about order placed? And we can hit save, and we have input success. And there we go, beige order, high in progress order placed. If we wanna delete it, we can delete it right here. We have a confirmation window to make sure we don't do anything wrong. And then we have an edit button if we wanna go back up here and edit the order, clear if we wanna input a new order. It's a really great thing I'm gonna show you how to build. And it's so important here to make sure that you can marry the front end with the back end. And I cover all of that throughout this project. And now let's take a sneak peek at the final project. This is the culmination of the course. 
There is so much going on here. It's going to put to use almost everything that you have learned in the course to make a beautiful, working, powerful project. And I'm going to show you how we manage the email list here. So let's say that we want to clear this report and get some new data in it. We can clear the data, but that's a sensitive operation. So we have to input a password before we can do that. Data cleared. Now let's import some new data. In the course, I provide you all three of these files so you can test your code. Let's go here with the 24,000 row import. All files imported successfully. That's a multiple file import, so we could have actually selected all three files and imported them at once if we wanted to. And now we can slice and dice our data however we want and see the results down here in a nice visual interface. And let's go ahead and export our email list. But before we do that, let's make sure it's going to go out to the right people. So we have to manage the back end of this workbook, but it's set up to do that in a nice visual way for someone who doesn't know how to program anything. So we're going to make the user's life easy. Let's click the settings button. And of course it's a sensitive operation. So input a password to get back to the settings, hit okay. And now we can see all of the back end worksheets. And here we have the helper data worksheet, a really great one that's going to allow us to do a number of things, most important of which is to manage our email list. So we can now add a new email here, a new name, whatever report type we wanted to generate from this report list over here, and then a name of a store if it was that type of report from the list over here. And then when we hit the email list button on the dashboard, that user would also get an email of the correct report and the correct store. So we already have a list of people right here. Let's go back to the dashboard and see how it's going to work. Click email list. And here we have all of the emails that are going to be sent out with their specific reports. So here we have one for Michael Scott, and he's going to get a dashboard, a CSV export, and a PDF report. And then we have a store report here for Dwight. This is a report for a specific store, and if we open it up, we are going to see the sales report for Dwight Schrute for the Atlantis store for this specific period. And the data all corresponds to that period and that store. Every report is going to be a custom report sent from a customizable email where you can choose whatever you want for the to, the CC, BCC subject, and whatever you want down here. Here we've kept it simple, but you can see if we go to the CSV report that we get a different type of report there for Creed Baratin. And so you're going to learn how to add a maximum versatility to your code. And here I had the emails display so that we could see them, but you could also have them automatically send in the back end so that you never see these windows at all. So you are really going to learn a lot of stuff in this final project. And that feature right there is maybe one of my favorite ones. So I wanted to make sure that I showed it to you, but you're going to learn how to do so many things. We can clear the filters from the dashboard with a button click and a confirmation. You can export custom reports. You can export dashboards, CSVs, full reports. And more important than just what you see right here is what you're going to be doing in the back end for this. Because I show you how to make your code versatile. You want to add a new report type in the future? That is just going to be a few lines of code. It's going to be very easy to add, update, manage, and maintain. You want to change anything? You want to make it so the buttons don't delete any exported report? It's very easy. Change a few things out here in the worksheet. You don't even have to change any code. So you never only just learn how to do a single thing. You learn how to implement systems and methods that afford you flexibility in your programming and in your project creation and usage so that you can change things in the future. And trust me, your boss, your client, or you yourself are going to have you change something in the future. Now let me show you the bonus section, which is going to show you how to build really powerful and useful user forms. And here we have an example of a user form that you are going to build piece by piece. It's really almost like a mini project in and of itself because we start with a little bit and then through every tutorial, we add new features onto it in order to create a dynamic user form where we can click a part of it and other parts of it appear. And then we can fill out the form if we don't fill out every part of the form correctly and we try and submit it, we're going to get an error. Attitude and your love of animals is required. 
And then we can go ahead and fill out this guy, select a free toy, add some notes, and the notes are on multiple lines using Enter. So it's a really nice way that we can input values, clear it if you want, hit Cancel or Submit. And through the course of making that user form, you're going to have all the skills that you need to make massive user forms, complex user forms that do pretty much every single thing that you need to do. So you can make a nice visual interfaces using a user form like this, or you can make nice visual interfaces using shapes and buttons like this. And yes, I show you how to make all of these beautiful custom buttons and how to put little images on them that are going to mean whatever you need them to mean for your project. Now let me show you some of the code behind all of this and then also how the reference files can help you so much. Here is the code from one of our very first tutorials. Just a few lines of code, a few comments, very easy to understand and follow, absolutely not overwhelming. I want you to see this because we start small and we build up baby steps so that you can create something amazing, but I'm not gonna overwhelm you. I'm gonna ease you into everything. And as we progress, the files are going to get a little bit bigger with more comments and more code. But all of the downloadable files, every single one of them, is going to be heavily commented so that you can download the file and then without having to go back to the video, you can figure out what's going on here, how to use whatever features I'm showing you how to use, why you want to use those features, any little variations, and then many, many examples in the code. Everything is commented. There are no empty lines of code here. Every code has a comment partner. And of course, whenever you want to, you can remove the comments so you have a much smaller file, something that we do in the projects. And let me show you an example of a really useful and heavily commented file. This one is where we're going to find a value using the find method. Let's say you come back here after a year and you say, oh my goodness, what is the find method? <laughs> what am I doing? All right. Well, I tell you what the feature is. It's the same as hitting Control F in the worksheet. I give you the syntax for it, all of the arguments, then which ones are optional. Then I have all of the arguments listed out here in the notes. Then all of the options for the arguments. Then the values for those options and what they mean. And then throughout these notes, how to use all of this. This is your reference guide. And then below that is when we go to the notes to explain any caveats, because it's always going to be more than just here are these arguments. There are so many little things you have to pay attention to. So I mentioned those here. And we get to the code so that we can actually put it into practice and do something useful with what we've just learned here in the comments. And this is what I meant about the reference files being so helpful. I made these specifically so that you do not have to rewatch the video tutorial to figure out what's going on. The video tutorial is going to build all of this without all of these comments and notes up here so it's easier to follow. And then I cover everything in the comments and notes in the video tutorial. But here in the downloadable file, you've got just as much information. And that's going to make it so that you always understand why we are doing something. A really good example of that is when we go to one of these arrange reference tutorials, I have a section for why is this important in the comments. And I include many sections like this so that you never feel lost throughout your code. And now that you've seen all of these comments, let me show you what is really my favorite part of this course which is how you can use these guys as reference files. So I told you that earlier in the course, the files are going to be smaller and just a few lines of code, but they get bigger as the course progresses. And the practical section tutorials are going to be used as reference guides, where for instance, let's say that you haven't worked with pivot tables for a long time. Well, let's go figure out how to do something in a pivot table using VBA. Here I have a folder with the downloadable files, or at least some of them, organized into their own directories. So I want to figure out how to do something with pivot tables. So let's go to the practical section for pivot tables, filters, and sorting. And pivot tables, what you need to know. Let's open that guy up. And let's hit Alt F11. And let's say that I forgot how to group dates. Well, let's go up here and take a look at the macros that we have here. And we've got one just for grouping dates. 
I can go here and then get all the comments and all the notes for exactly how this works because it can be quite confusing and an example of how to do it and some code that we can copy and paste into our own project to get a jump start on grouping dates for our own pivot table. So I could either copy paste this code into my project or I can go ahead and read through all the comments and all the notes and see how it's implemented. One of my favorite examples of this reference guide style file is the PDF one. Let's say that I want to export to a PDF and I kind of forgot how to do it because there are some really tricky things you need to pay attention to when you do that in order to make robust and maintainable code that the user isn't going to be able to mess up easily. So what do I do? Well, I go back here, back up a one directory and let's go for the practical import export email section and export PDF. And let's hit Alt F11, and you can see it is heavily commented. You are not going to be left in the dark for anything here in the downloadable file. What do I want to do? Well, look at all these options. Do I want to export the PDF, all worksheets in the workbook? How about multiple ranges, multiple separate worksheets, multiple worksheets? How about just a range? What about with additional print options or a workbook or just a worksheet? Let's go with a multiple worksheets. I've got some comments for how to use it, and then the specific code that I need, which I can then copy and paste wherever I need. So either I can relearn how to do it if I forgot, I can rewatch the video tutorial if I want, or I can just copy paste this guy wherever I want and change the worksheet references. And this is really the beauty of the course. I want you to always have a way to figure out how to do what you're trying to do, either through the videos or the downloadable files and the comments or through the practical assignments and the projects. You have many resources that you can rely upon through this course to make sure that you become an expert in VBA programming. And that is my full Excel VBA course that's going to take you from beginner to expert level. And if you have any questions about this, make sure to contact me and I'll get back to you as soon as I can.